All right. Uh, next up, Mike Congrove was not able to make it, but um, he has had uh, kindly Stan Allen has offered to stand in for him. So I'm going to turn this over. It's uh, it, he's called it Tiny Home on Wheels, but you'll see how that's modified. Uh, good morning. I can tell you uh, that Mike is truly bummed not to be able to be here. So uh, I'll try to act adequately represent his project, and I say his project because this. This really is his brainstorm that he developed a number of years ago, and we've continued to develop it now, and I'll, I'll make my role apparent later. Um, Oyster Seed Holdings is a, is a fairly large independent hatchery in Matthews County, Virginia, providing a good quantity of seed to the East Coast industry. Um, by independent, I mean it's not a vertically integrated company, and that's by philosophical choice on Mike's part, the owner, because he wants to be an independent provider of seed to growers and be responsible to the growers primarily. So that's his mindset in, in his company. Of course, this isn't a talk about tiny homes for people. This is a talk about tiny homes for oysters. And this is kind of a mock-up. We don't really have a trailer with the, with the, uh, lay, the wrap on it like you see, because those cost about $8,000 to put on a trailer. <laughs> um, but uh, I, my, Mike has had a sort of a pioneering attitude towards um, hatchery culture for a very long time, and he's always on the cutting edge of things, and part of those elements that he's been developing have been incorporated into this um, uh, design that I'll show you here. But in addition to having the hatchery business, we have an interest in expanding his footprint in both research and development and community outreach. The community outreach um, idea is exactly along the lines of what Adrian was talking about earlier, is educating people about the aquaculture and its cultural benefits and that kind of thing. The R&D element, that's kind of my daily work. I used to work at VIMS and now I do real work with Mike. Um, and so <laughs> the first thing right out of the box in getting involved with Mike was trying to take this idea of a portable or a mobile hatchery to a, another level and um, we submitted a phase two SBIR, Small Business Administration uh, Innovation Research Program is a program that's available in many of the state um, national agencies and it's a wonderful tool for um, companies to ask very, very practical problems, and this is an example of that. So this is a research project I'm describing to you. Um, so really it's about this tiny home for hatchery, which way am I going here? Okay, so like I said, Mike has been working on current technologies in the hatchery for many years. Um, for example, you know, hanging bag culture, uh, conditioning processes, uh, larval culture at high density, flow-through methods. Um, he has a development for being able to reduce the resources needed for setting, which uh, I'll talk about in a minute. And of course, developing the, the system of bottle culture to optimize some of the early nursery uh, stuff coming out of the hatchery. And all these elements that he's been working on in the bigger hatchery have been mini miniaturized into the portable or the mo mobile hatchery. So the journey for this story starts back in about 2014. And I have no idea how he, well, I mean, it's a simple idea to think about. How do I diversify my seed production and get away from the vicissitudes of water quality changes? All right, everybody thinks about that. Why he actually went and made a portable, a prototype portable trailer is really part of the genius of that. So he built a, a trailer with the current technology at the time in 2014 and started to deploy it in a couple of different places to see how it would work. He, we ran it down in Virginia, he ran it down up, up in Maryland, and that was kind of the genesis of 
where we are now, basically. Um, this is the initial design for the trail. It's a schematic of the initial one. And I don't have a pointer, but the, on the front row here, with, on, the, on your right, there's the incubation tanks um, for the first six or so days. Then they go into the flow-through tanks. You'll see that it's all one open area, and the hanging bag culture is opposite the tanks there. And one of the innovations of the new design is to separate the algal cultural area from the larval area because there are two condition, different conditioning requirements for those spaces. Um, and then after a couple of years of running this, uh, he had also started working on uh, a, a new method of setting um, animals that took up a lot less resources than is typically used. And, I mean, setting process is a two-dimensional process where you set up, set your downwellers out and you're taking up a whole bunch of um, aerial space in that way. But he's trying to develop a system that can be miniaturized. It turns out he's using the system in his hatchery at large, but it also lends very well to being miniaturized for producing seed. So just to mention, the first version of the trailer was meant for eyed larvae, not for seed. So all that was coming out of the end of the trailer were eyed larvae. All right, so um, this is a, just a graphic of what the comparison of the, the, uh, the uh, requirements are for the two different, the traditional setting system is depicted at the right, where we're talking about maybe 400 million eyed larvae a week, needing a flow of about 40 liters per minute, of seawater and it takes up 500 square feet. And the system he's been working on, um, and again is commercialized in his hatchery, is talking about 180 million eyed larvae a week with 10 liters per minute of seawater and it takes up 80 square feet. So you can see how this is prone, this is um, able to be miniaturized for this particular development. So his phase two award, basically, which led to the I'm sorry, phase one award, which led to the phase two, was really to test this out for sure and make sure this is a legitimate um, development so that it could be incorporated as a design element for the second version of the trailer that we're testing. And then, <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, in 2020, well, actually, this is in 2020, we applied for SBIR phase two based on his track record of having developed this thing in the first place, and then the innovations and new design. And so the question is, if we build one, do they work? And I love the fact that this is just as simple as that. Uh, you know, we asked, we said the USDA, we got this idea, it seems commercializable, but we really don't know because we don't have any replicate, you know, runs to make. Will you buy us a couple so we can try it out? And they said yes. So that's where we're at. And this is the um, this is a schematic of the new design version two. And I'm quite sure that there'll be more iterations. We're, I mean, we're already learning things, and these things have only been deployed for a month into the field. So we're already learning things about where they're deployed and how they're being used. But the, the new design, the big element is a partition separating the algal culture area from the larval culture area. And uh, that turned out to be really um, important in order to maintain the algal uh, um, continuity. So our project, to describe our project briefly, is um, we basically had one prototype and we had a new model, so we're gonna re convert the old prototype to the new version. And then we acquired two additional semi-trailers. They're 51-foot reefer units without the actual cooling unit on it. And they were converted into their own port mo modular hatcheries. And the plan that we've started to implement is that we're sending these out to they're gonna be co-located with a hatchery present in three different places. One's up in Virginia, so we're putting it right next to Mike's, but the point of that is 
well, if we just put it all alone by itself and it doesn't work, does that mean it does, the trailer doesn't work or does that mean the site doesn't work? So we're getting a read on whether the site's reasonable or not by co-locating them with the existing hatchery presence. So there's one up by our hatchery, there's one down in Georgia with uh, Tom, and there's one down at FSU with Sandra Brook and company down there. And the idea is for the, to run these things for a couple years. And the data, I love it. I mean, there's not a single mention of statistics in this whole grant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's just, okay, we're going to tell you what the algal densities get to and how many larvae we get and what the survival is and how many seed come out the door. That's it. Um, so just a little bit more about the, some pictures about the other design. Um, these things are, you know, they're trailers so that you have to build stairs up to them. Well, you don't have to. I mean, for years, Mike just climbed up a ladder or jumped up himself on the back. But once these get into institutions, you can't do that kind of thing. Um, this shows the water filtration unit in the middle. How am I doing on time? Okay. Um, and this is a video which I'm not positive will work. Do you think it'll work? I have, I have faith, yeah. Here we go. So this is just a walkthrough. He started aiming the camera at the back door, and now he's aiming it towards the front. You just pass the two incubation tanks, and that's a water circulation sump there that circulates water all throughout it. And this isn't a finished version, by the way. This was taken before deployment. This area is the broodstock area. Now we're walking back into the algal area. Keep in mind that when these trailers come in, there's nothing, zero, in them. So every bit of plumbing, every bit of electric, every bit of um, boiler installation you see has been installed for, um, uh, de novo, basically. So that's just a quick um, overview of it. Whoops. All right, so um, that's a description of our research project. Um, as I said, one of the really interesting things is, you know, when you think you have it all figured out, you don't. And it's really interesting the kinds of things that are coming out of the woodwork on what the design elements of these things should be. For example, when we had our first training session with somebody who was gonna take care of these things, all of a sudden we realize, wait a minute, these things are going down south. Do we have to put in chiller units in order to hold the broodstock back, for example? That wasn't a typical design that you have to throw in for northern waters kinds of considerations. So we're going to use this two-year period to try to learn everything we can about you know, the, the nuances of these designs and whether this makes commercial sense or not. And then we'll see whether it's a good idea or not. So, any questions? Thanks, Ken. <clears throat> All right. We have time for a couple questions. All right, I'll come over to Megan there. What's your water source? Not natural seawater? Yeah, it's wherever we plant it. We have to draw water adjacent for waters. What's the advantage of having the mobile hatchery versus a uh, brick and mortar facility? Uh, floods, hurricanes, things that affect um, units that are, um, you know, can't be moved. Uh, it, I mean, Stan, the, I'll, I'll jump in that also one of the, the most critical things for a hatchery is location. So if you are building a brick and mortar hatchery and you've chosen the wrong location, you're, you've made a bad investment. The idea of having a mobile hatchery where I could actually go test that and see how it works really appeals to me before I make that investment. Are you starting out with triploids or diploids? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter. I, I mean, if you can grow one, you can grow the other. So, <laughs> I'm agnostic on that point. <laughs> How much output 
are you expecting to get from pardon how much output like how how much seed do you expect to oh um, yeah um <laughs> that's of course the million dollar question i want to I want to answer right, and I thought maybe it was one of the slides, but I think it's a million seed per run. Well, a, a run would be the, the extent of a larval cycle. So, you know, you've got your two, two and a half week period for larvae, and then your setting period, and then bringing it up to one millimeter. So it's one millimeter seed out the back door, basically. After that, you can't feed them. It's too, they're too hungry. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Stan, are, 